Hello. In this video, I'll talk about apoptosis or programmed cell death. So cells need to grow, they need to divide, and they need to form more cells in order to support the growth of an organism. But not only the birth and the growth of the cell is important, also the death of the cell is very important. And the cell death is occurring at a highly regulated and a stepwise fashion. It's not a haphazard process. And the process by which this regulated uh, events would lead to cellular death is known as apoptosis. Now, you might think that cell death is not a good event, but it is very important for a life, cy life cycle of a cell because if it is immortal, then diseases like cancer could happen where uncontrolled division and proliferation can give rise to tumor formation and thereby lead and that lead to cancer. So cancer cells are literally immortal. So they somehow evade the process of apoptosis. That means the programmed cell death. So they don't die. So that's a bad event. So that is why learning about apoptosis is so important. And also this if the apoptosis is an enzyme regulated process because it's pretty regulated now the key enzyme that helps in this process is known as caspase and the name is an abbreviation for cysteine dependent aspartate directed protease so it's a cysteine it's a, it's it belongs to the family of the cysteine protease and it also cleaves after the aspartate residue in the target protein and it cleaves the target protein by a subsequent nucleophilic attack. So caspase can activate several other dangerous proteins which are normally dormant inside the cell like DNAs, RNAs and proteases. So normally these proteins are dormant inside the cell but caspase can activate them and thereby overall destruction program could be uh, initiated inside a cell. So the uh, the fact that the cell would die, the signal or the order that the cell should die right now should come from either inside or it can come from outside. Let's talk about when the signal for apoptosis is coming from the inside, the intrinsic signal for apoptosis. The intrinsic signal of apoptosis generally contains irreparable DNA damage or double-stranded DNA break, let's say. So the DNA damage has to be detected by specific proteins like ATM or ATR. Those are kinases. And tumor suppressor gene P53 try to understand that what is the degree of damage. If it is the repairable damage, it would halt the cell cycle, progression of the cell division, and give the cell time to uh, reboot its own uh, activity or repair its DNA. But if the damage is fatal, then P53 will activate BACs or increase the transcription of BACs. Now BACs is a protein which can form pore on the mitochondrial membrane. And in the mitochondrial membrane, there is cytochrome C which leaks out from this pore. Now cytochrome C is a component of the electron transport system or electron transport chain which generates the ATP. Now ATP is important for the cell. It's a power house of the cell, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and the ATP is the energy currency. So the cytochrome C is not there, the electron carrier is missing, the ATP cannot be produced. That is one type of harm. But this is not the last. Cytochrome C, once out in the cytosol, can interact with other proteins like APOF1. Together with APOF1, it can activate caspases. Cytochrome C and APOF1 together can activate initiator caspases like caspase 8 or caspase 9 and normally these caspases are also in an inactive form that are triggered and activated by a proteolytic cleavage. Once the initiator caspases are active, they also activate subsequent executor caspases and most commonly the executor caspase is caspase 3. Once the executor caspase is activated, it would ensure the cell would die by cleaving DNA by cleaving the DNA or by cleaving the cytoskeletal element.
overall cytoskeleton breakdown would happen. Now, extrinsic signal of apoptosis could occur outside the cell. Now, we take a specific example of how a virus infected cell is destroyed by a cytotoxic T cell. So, there the extrinsic signal is viral entry or viral infection. Let's say this cell in the middle, the yellow cell, is infected by the virus. And the viral proteins gone inside, they are translated using the host cell machinery. And this translated viral protein are processed in class 1 MHC inside the endoplasmic reticulum and displayed on the cell surface. The cytotoxic C T cell, the CD8 positive cytotoxic T cell can recognize that and they can secrete porphyrin and granzymes, which would ultimately induce the apoptotic pathway. Now, here is the blue, which is the T cell, and the yellow is the cell that are that is virus infected. Now, the porphyrin and the granzymes are getting inside the cell. Porphyrin and granzyme, porphyrin form a pore by which granzyme can come out, and granzyme can activate several uh, proteins, proapoptotic proteins like bead, BAX, BAD, etc., which all lead to leak of cytochrome C in the cytosol. That ultimately activates inactive caspase 3 to caspase, uh, cleaved caspase 3. And cleaved caspase 3 can lead to apoptosis. Other way, there are several receptor and ligand interaction, FAS-L and FAS-mediated interactions on the surface, which can activate uh, proteins such as, active, uh, the, such as inactive caspase and they can cleave that to form an activated caspase 8. That ultimately leads to caspase 3 production and leads to apoptosis. Now, in this example, we saw the signal for killing the cell or a programmed cell death has been originated outside of the cell. And the, uh, the signal was infection by the virus. And by a caspase mediated coordinated fashion, the cell is dying. And the ultimate outcome is breaking of the cytoskeletal, breaking out the architecture of the cell, and the cell would die, forming blebs, which contains fragmented DNA, protein, and its cytoskeletal elements. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.